Hello everyone, I'm John Furrier here in Palo Alto at our CUBE headquarters. We're here with John Del Santo, Senior Managing Director at Accenture for a CUBE Conversation. John, welcome to the CUBE, good to see you. Thanks John, great to be here. So we were just talking before we came on camera about Accenture and all the stuff you guys are doing. You guys are in the cloud heavily. We've been following you guys, have probably one of the most comprehensive analytics teams out there um, and global. Uh, SI market and just how uh, the world's changing. So it's, it's pretty fun and looking forward to this conversation. So I got to ask you first, before we get started, <laughs> I want to jump in with a ton of questions. What is your role at Accenture? You're in the Bay Area. Take a minute to explain what you do for Accenture and what's your territory. I've got the best job at Accenture. <laughs> so uh, Accenture has got close to half a million people uh, right now. And my job is, to, I'm responsible for our business on the West Coast, uh, across all of our industries, et cetera. Um, I've been here 32 years, so I've seen a lot of things happen in the Bay Area. and you know, I now have the responsibility of making sure that we're doing great work for our clients and we're doing great work in the community and that we're providing great opportunities to the thousands of people that work for us here in the, in the Bay Area and, and across the West Coast. So it's a lot of fun. Obviously the West Coast is booming and Patek has been a hotbed and obviously the industry is across the board now is global. Uh, I got to ask you because, you know, you've been around multiple ways of innovation and Accenture has been, had their hands in enabling a lot of value creation sure. for clients. You guys have a great reputation. There's a lot of smart people. But the waves are always kind of different in their own way, but sometimes it's, some, it's the same. What's different about the wave we're living now? Because you can almost look back and see the major inflection points now. So the PC revolution, client server, interoperability, networking stacks went standard. Then you saw the web internet come, now you got web 2.0, and now you've got the whole global, you've got things like cryptocurrency and blockchain, you have multiple clouds, you have a whole new game changing dynamic going on with IT infrastructure combined with open source at a whole nother level. So how is this wave different? Is it like the, how would you compare? Well, I, I think all the technologies that have waved through my career at least have been real enablers for the business model that the companies had at the time and, and, and that they evolved. Uh, what we see now is epic disruption, right? So the waves now are, you have digital native companies that are just disrupting the heck out of the industry or the, the company that, 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 we, that we're trying to help. And so it's now about pulling all those technologies together and really figuring out a new business model for a client, figuring out a new distribution channel, a new product that's maybe you know, made of natively digital. And so it's very, very different, I feel, than, than it was five, 10, 15, 20 years ago through some, through some of the other waves. Talk about the uh, things going on in the Bay Area before we get into more of the global themes because I think the Bay Area is always kind of a leading indicator, I call it a bellwether. Yeah. Some cool things happen, you got things like the Golden State Warriors got a stadium that's being built. I'm watching the um, World Series um, with the Red Sox and you see Amazon Statcast, you're seeing overlays, you're seeing Rose Royale, all these things are changing the work and play. The Bay Area's got a lot of leading indicators. What are some of the projects that you've been involved in? What's happening now that you think's worth noting that's exciting, that, get, that piques your interest? Yeah, I mean, I, we work across every industry and, and we do a ton of work in tech, but I actually find some of the more interesting projects are the ones we're doing for healthcare companies in the Bay Area, um, some of the utilities in the Bay Area, some of the big resource companies, some of the financial services institutions. Because like I said before, all of those industries have disruption coming or have been disrupted. And so we're doing some, some work right now around patient services in healthcare and in pharma that is, that is really interesting. It's meant to change the experience that a, that, that a patient has, that you and I have as, when we interact with our healthcare providers or um, you know, you know, the whole industry. And so th th those, those kinds of projects are really interesting because a lot of these industries are old and, and, and sort of have a big legacy estate and, and model that they need to transform from. So they, they need to move fast. And, what we, we kind of describe it as a wise pivot. They sort of need to move, but they need to make sure they're moving at the right time. They can't, they can't hurt their existing business, but they got to pivot to the, to the next business model. And, and that's happening in lots of places. And you're right, I think it is happening a lot in the Bay Area and the West Coast is, is sort of a bellwether. I want to get your thoughts on some of the moments that are going on in tech. You mentioned before we came on camera, you worked for Apple in the old days. And Tim Cook was just recently tweeting yesterday, he had a tweet storm around privacy, he was at this big GDPR conference. The role of regulatory um, now is in changing the, some of the West Coast dynamics. It used to be kind of a, you know fast and loose West Coast, innovate, and then it gets operationalized globally with tech, tech right. trends. Yeah. What's the tech enablers now that you see that, that are, they're involved that actually have to deal with regulatory and is regulatory an opportunity? You mentioned utilities, finance, those are two areas you can jump out and say, okay, we see some of their privacy is another right. one. So you know how tech, perfect storm of tech and regulatory frameworks. How has that impacted your job in the, in the West Coast? Well, I mean, GDPR is, um, we live with every day, and uh, clearly, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a ton of work in Europe, um, 
And I think that's one of the advantages Accenture has of being a big global company and being able to take lessons learned from other parts of the world that are likely to come to the United States, et cetera. So, um, but I, I think the, the combination of tech and regulatory are going to be merging together here pretty quickly, especially when we talk about um, AI and data privacy and that sort of thing. Um, but you know, it's definitely been an evolution. Uh, great to hear you know Tim's point of view on on what Apple uh, what Apple thinks. Um, and it was, it's been really fun in my life to see you know Apple in the '80s when I worked there. They were a client of mine in the '80s. I worked with Next Computing in the, in the 90s, and then uh, obviously they're a big partner of ours now, so it's, it's been a really interesting evolution. What are some of the growth <laughs> accomplishments you guys have in the Bay Area? Obviously, there's been growth here for you guys, obviously we've been seeing it. Well, I, I think the, 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 the amount of tech-driven disruption, or you know, digital transformation we call it, is, is growing like crazy. So, you know, 20 years ago, we, wouldn't have, we were doing a lot of e-commerce work. We kind of shied away from doing Y2K work, and a lot of our competitors saw that as a big, uh, big opportunity. We didn't think it was a lot of value for our clients, fixing old systems. Mm -hmm. And so we pivoted to e-commerce in a very aggressive way. And I would say now that's evolved even further where more than you know, close to two thirds of our business here on the West Coast mm -hmm. is what we call the new, which is you know, cloud, security, digital uh, mm -hmm. analytics. And I really think it gets down to, we were talking a little bit earlier about the data. And, and so we have more data scientists than we've ever had, and we, we probably hire them you know, one or two every day out here on the West Coast, and it's about the data. The data is driving our consulting business, it's driving our technology business, it's driving what we're doing with AI, obviously, and things like that. So the transformation's been pretty tremendous. So take a minute to explain the digital transformation. Data, you mentioned a lot of things. You've got data in there, you've got cloud, and you mentioned earlier you've got kind of cloud-first companies. You've got born in the cloud, born in AI, AI-first, data-first, these new companies yeah. that are essentially disrupting incumbents also your clients that are kind of born before the cloud, and they got to transform. Is digital transformation one of those things or both of those things? How, would, how does digital transformation translate to the clients that you guys work with? Well, every client has a unique set of needs depending on where they came from. We do a lot of work with the digital natives. Um, we do a lot of work with the unicorns out here on the West Coast. Uh, and their needs are different. You know, they need to learn how to scale globally. They, they, they need help in the back office. They need help uh, sort of maturing their business model. We do a lot of work with legacy you know, financial services companies, healthcare companies, that sort of thing. They need to figure out how to sort of, you know, pivot to digital products or digital interactions with their customers. We have a very large business now in Accenture Interactive around helping to find customer experiences for clients. And we think, you know, you know it's our, our mission to sort of help our clients mm -hmm. really redefine that relationship with their customer, their supplier, their supply chain and the experience is a key part of that, uh, given expectations. Well. Yeah, we have a lot of CUBE conversations around IT transformation as well, and you know, had, had a CIO, big time uh, firm, he won't say the name because it's a little out on, but he said, we've been outsourcing IT for so many years, but now we got to build the core competency internally because now it's a competitive advantage, and um, they have to ramp up pretty quickly, cloud helps them there, and they need partners that can help them move the needle on the top line of business, not just cost control and operational uh, scale, sure. or whether it's horizontally scalable, scale out or whatnot, top line revenue. This is what where the bread, the bread and butter of the companies are. Right. So how, how are you guys engaging with the clients? Give some examples of how you're helping them with a the digital transition to drive their business. How do you engage them? Do you do the standard sales calls engagements? You bring them to a technology center. As the world starts to change, how do you guys help those clients uh, reach those top lines? Well, I, yeah, a perfect client for us. You know, we're, we're really good at helping clients cut, <laughs> cut costs and get really efficient and you know, be, you know, be good with their peers or, or on cost structure. We love a client where they want us to help them with that and they want to pivot you know, the savings to the new part. What, the, the way, you know, one of the things that triggered a thought when you uh, mentioned that was we like to bring our clients into our innovation hubs. So we have, we've had labs here on the West Coast for a long time. We now have 10 innovation hubs in the US. We have a very large one in San Francisco now. And so we'll bring a client into our innovation hub and really roll up our sleeves with the client and over a week or two weeks or three period of time you really brainstorm on what, how, you know, envisioning their future for their company, build a minimal viable product if we have to out of our uh, rapid uh, prototyping capability, and really envision what the target end state of their business could be, of their product could be, or their customer interaction. And we'll model it. Uh, rather than sort of do a study, do another study, yeah. do, a, do a PowerPoint presentation, it's let's roll up our sleeves and figure out how to really pivot your business to the new, and then take it from there. Um, and, and they so, come to your location for an like extended period of time. Yeah, so we'll have, you know, any given day, we'll have at least two different clients in our, in our location doing either a, a couple of day workshop, a multi-week workshop, and we're, it's, 
it's co-creation. It's it's us collaborating with our clients to figure out a solution. A good example is we had a one of our large clients from the West Coast in there recently, and we we're we we're trying to figure out how to use drone technology to drive analytics in you know over a geography to provide better data to them to minimize risk and. We've got a number of co-creation projects now going on with them to figure out how do we take that into a solution that not only helps their, their business, but maybe is a, is a commercially available system. Yeah, our Wikibon research team brings us all the time with IoT and security, you're starting to see companies leverage their existing assets, which is physical as well, yeah. as digital, and then figure out a model that makes them work together because these new use cases are, are springing up. So what are some of those use cases that you guys see happening? Because you mentioned drone, because that's an IoT device, essentially. Um, there's all these new, scenarios that are emerging. Right. And the speed is critical. It's not like, you can't do a study. There's no time to do a study. There's no time to do these things. You got to get some feet on the ground. You got to have a product in market. You got to iterate. This is the, the DevOps right. culture. Right. What are some so, examples? So we, 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 um, we did a project for a big ag company, not, uh, not actually a West, West Coast based company, but they came to our labs to, 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 to look at it. And basically what we did was we did a, um, you know, we covered a, an area of the it's basically the size of Delaware in, uh, in terms of drone video. And we were able to drive analytics from that in 10 times faster, figure out for them where the, f where the forest was weak and where it wasn't, where they ought to worry about vegetation, where they might have disease issues or, or other risks they were facing them. And those analytics we were able to drive a lot faster. And so rather than manually going around this huge, you know, huge square mile you know, yeah. uh, set of geography, they were able to sort yeah. of, uh, do it through technology a lot faster. Yeah, you know, just a side note, I was talking to Paul Darty and interviewed him, He's, we were celebrating, uh, covering the celebration, your 30th anniversary of your labs. Yeah. And one of the interviews I did was um, a wacky idea, which made total sense, was during like a car accident or, or scene where there's been a car accident, they send drones in first and they map out the, the forensics sure. first. And they like, okay, who would have thought of that? I mean, this, these are new things that are happening yeah. that are, change in the game, one, the road gets them open up faster, they get the data that they need, they don't have to spend all that physical time laying things out. This is not just a one-off, this is like in every industry. Absolutely. Um, is there an industry that's hotter than another for you guys? Um, you know, we always hear oil and gas, utilities, um, financial services is kind of the big ones. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the hot areas that you guys see the most activity on, on this kind of new way of taking existing industries and transforming them? I, you know, I don't know if I could pinpoint an industry, I really don't, I mean, because I, I, I see, you know, what we're trying to do with anti-money laundering and banking is, is really moving, moving the ball forward, what we're doing with patient services and pharma and healthcare is, is pretty aggressive. Even some of the things we're doing for some of the states and, and, and governments around, you know, citizen services to make sure that, you know, because you know, all of us have expectations now on how we want to interact with government and, you know, our expectations uh, are not being met in just about every department, right? So we're doing a lot of work with states uh, around how to employ, you know, how kind of, provide a better experience to the citizens. So I don't know if I could pinpoint an actual uh, yeah. industry. The, one of the fun ones we just, you know, that we're involved with out here on our patch is one of the big gaming companies in Vegas. We are doing a lot of video analytics and technology. And again, it's something like 20 times faster to be able to detect fraud, being able to figure out what's going on at a gaming table and how to provide war rewards quicker to their to their uh, customers, keep them at the table faster or longer. Or build <laughs> he's got a nice stack of chips, always going down. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Give him a comp through yeah. him, he's feeling down. But Look at his facial expressions. I can almost imagine, I mean, uh, this is the thing, I would agree, I think this every vertical we see is, is being disrupted. Just mentioned public sector is interesting. We were riffing at an Amazon event one time around, you know, who decides where the self-driving cars? These towns and cities don't have the budget or right. the bandwidth to figure out and reimagine the public services that they have, they're offering the citizens. The consumerization of IT hits public sector. For sure. And yeah. they, they need help. Exactly. So again, every, every industry is going on. Okay, well I want to step back and get some time in for analytics because you guys have been investing as a company heavily in analytics in the past 10 years. Past, I think, I think seven years you guys have been really, really ramping up the investment on, yeah. on data science, analytics. Give us an update on that. How is that going? How has that changed? And what's the update today? Yeah, and it's a good point. I mean, and again, you mentioned the labs being here for 30 years. A lot of our data scientists and, and big machine learning and, and big data folks, frankly, started the labs here years and years ago. And so we've now got one of the largest analytics capabilities, I think, of any, of any services company globally. Um, we called it applied intelligence. It's a combination of our analytics capability and artificial intelligence. And it, we basically have an analytics capability that's built into all the different services that we provide. So we think it's, everything's about analytics, just about. I mean, clearly you can't do a consulting project unless you've really um, got a unique analytic 
analytical point of view or and have unique data around assessing a, a client's problem. You, you know, you, you you really can't do a project or implement a system without you know a heavy data influence. So we are adding, you know. Frankly, I think every day I'm improving more analytics headcount into, <laughs> into our team on the West Coast in lots of different practices. Yeah. And it so it spans industries, it spans all the, the platforms and that sort of thing. But we it's we're we're the largest with most of the big data players. You know, I think one of the consistent trends with AI, which is now being the word artificial intelligence AI, is kind of encapsulated the whole big data world because big data sure. is now AI because the implementation of it. Um, you're seeing everything from fraud, you mentioned um, anti-money laundering, you know, your customer, these kinds of dynamics, but you got the whole dark web phenomenon going out there with uh, um, fraud. Mm. You know, all kinds of underground economies going on, so AI is a real value driver across all industries around, one, understanding what's happening, sure, and then how to figure out how to applications development could be smarter. Right. This is kind of relatively new concept for these scale out applications which is what businesses do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how is, how is that going? Any color commentary on the impact of AI specifically around how companies are operationally changing and reimagining their businesses? Well, I think it's very early days for most, most of our clients, most big companies. Um, I think you know, we've done some recent surveys that say you know, something like 78% of our clients believe that AI is really, really important and they're not at all prepared to, to deal with or apply it to their business. Um, so I think it's relatively early days. It, it, you know, we there's a huge fight for skills. I mean, so we're we're building our team and that sort of thing. We're also classic Accenture. We grow skills pretty well too, yeah. uh, through both on the job training and real training. Um, and so I, I think we're st we're seeing sort of baby steps with AI. Uh, there's a lot of great vended solutions out there that we're able to apply to business uh, problems as well. But I think we're in relatively early days. It's almost as if you know the old black box, garbage in, garbage out. You have good data, and you got to exactly. understand data differently. And I think what I'm seeing is a lot of data architects going on, figuring out how do we take the role of data and put it in a position to be successful. It's kind of like because then you use AI, you go, that's great. But what about well, we missed this data set. Right. You got to have fully exposed data sets. So this is all new dynamics. So you have to iterate through it, and you'll have yeah. to you know you have solutions that'll start and restart. All right. So final question for you: Talk about this technology hubs again. So you have the labs. Get that. So how many hubs do you have? Technology hubs. Well, in the U.S., there's ten. Um, uh, but I would say in the West Coast, it's it's really San Francisco and Seattle right now, um, with San Francisco being our our flagship. And frankly, it's a flagship in the U.S. We've had the 30-year presence of our labs here on the West Coast, and we've had uh, design studios on the West Coast. We've had our uh, what we call Liquid Studios, which is a big rapid, t rapid prototyping sort of capability. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had our research, et cetera. We've pulled all of those locations. So our lab started in Palo Alto, went to San Jose, and is now in San Francisco. We've pulled all those locations together into what we're calling the Innovation Hub for, for the West Coast. And it's a five-story marquee building um, in San Francisco, and it's where we bring our clients. And we expect to have, literally, I think last year we had 200 and something client uh, workshops and, and, and co-creation sessions there. This year, I think the number is going to go to 400, and so it's really becoming a fabric of all of our practices. How important is the co-creation? Because you have a physical presence here, and it's the flagship for the for the innovation hub, and it's, a, and it's an uh, accumulation of a lot of work you guys done across yeah. multiple things you've done: labs, liquid labs, all that stuff coming together. Um, how important is the co-creation part as a mechanism for fostering collaboration with your clients? Co-creation certainly hot. Great your question. thoughts on co-creation? Great question, and I I would tell you. Accenture has kind of gone through waves as technology has gone through waves, and so we were always an enabler for clients' projects, and, and, and we did a lot of project work. I think we're in a wave now where we're going to be the innovation partner. We continue to sort of be named the innovation partner or the digital partner for certain clients, and we're going to do that through co-creating with them. And it's not just on you know at their site, et cetera. It's going to be co-creation in our in our labs where we're taking advantage of the hundreds of data scientists and computer researchers and, and, and technical architects that we have in our labs to create something that's new and fresh and, and purpose-built for their particular business model. So we think co-creation is a huge part of the formula for us being successful with our clients over the next 10 years. And so that's why we've put this infrastructure in place, expect it to expand and to be sold out and that sort of thing. Yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's a, a good way for us to, to build capability and really, really viable solutions for our clients going forward. So it's not just a, um, a sales development initiative, it's an, it's an operationalized engagement and delivery mechanism for exactly. you guys. Exactly, it's not, I mean it has, it, it, it self markets, yeah. but it's not about marketing. Um, it, it's about, you know, you know, we'll have tours and we'll have a little yeah. tourism through our center. And so clients will say, wait, look at that maker lab, look what you're doing with that yeah. client. I want one of those, right? I need to do that in my business even though I'm in a different industry. 
So it's a, it's not really a marketing tool per se, it's a, it's a way for us to interact. Well, and it's a showcase in the sense of where you can showcase what you have and if clients see value, they can go to the next step. It's an accelerated path to outcomes, reimagining exactly. businesses. Um, okay, final question. What have you learned from all this? Because now you guys have a state-of-the-art engagement model, delivery model around cloud, all these things coming together, perfect storm for what you guys do. Um, as you guys look back and see what you've built and where it's going to go, what are the key learnings that you guys came out of the, the West Coast team around pulling it all together over the years? What's the key learnings? Well, I think that our, our clientele um, is just thirsty for innovation and innovation now. It's not about sort of let's envision the future and we'll get to it some other day. It's what can we do right now and what journey, you know, what glide path are we on to change our business? So the pace is just radically different than it used to be. Um, and so it's about changing, you know, you know rapidly changing, putting real, innova real innovation on it and collaborating with clients and, and, and a, at a pace that, that we've never seen before. I mean, I've been here 32 years <laughs> and I've just never seen the pace of change. <laughs> it's great, John. So thanks so much, I really appreciate it. We'll get a quick plug in. What's coming up for you guys? What's going on, on the West Coast? What's happening? Well, we're in event season right now. So um, we just finished all the, you know, we're, we're wrapping up op op Oracle Open World. We just won five awards at or Oracle yeah. Open World. We just did an acquisition on the West Coast to beef up our Oracle capabilities. Uh, we've got um, reInvent, and we have all kinds of events yeah. coming up, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's been a, a pretty so busy So cloud season. and data have certainly helped uh, rise the tide for your business. 100%, <laughs> I mean, the, the cl uh, cloud is, is taking Accenture from, yeah. you know, kind of in the back of the office and put us into the front office over the last 10 years. Well, certainly it's awesome. It's re re leveling the playing field, allowing, allowing companies to scale out very rapidly, bringing in DevOps culture, new kinds of modern application developments, real value being created. Uh, super exciting time. Thanks for coming in and sharing Great. the time. John Del Santo here in theCUBE for CUBE Conversations, Senior Managing Director of Accenture. I'm John Furrier here in the CUBE studios for CUBE Conversations. Thanks for watching. <laughs>